coolness has always been this thing that I've always been like since I was a child like suspicious of and also on the outside of and like so I can I think about like adolescent or previous attempts to be perceived as hip or cool are always like treacherous so you've always been suspicious of cool but then what's funny you know the irony of that is you're I want to cool. be cool well you're cool now oh god you're cool to all the kids the young kids coming up doing sketch comedy and stand-up they're like oh she's the she and john are the cool ones i fucking did it <laughs> <laughs> I texted you the other day because Jenny, my wife Jenny and I saw Cinnamon in the Wind and laughed so hard. Oh, thank you so much. People say that to you every day, probably? No. No? People come to me and go, your special Cinnamon <laughs> in the Wind, which flew under the radar. <laughs> yeah, and my ah. wife and I were dying last night. No, that's why I was so thrilled when you, um, when you texted me that. So it's, thank you. Has it flown under the radar? Well, it's just one. Of, well, first of all, it's sort of a weird situation because I shot it. Uh, Bo Burnham directed it. We shot it in 2019. Wow. And then 2019. Yeah. Those are the days. I know. I had so much ahead of me, and <laughs> the. I mean, if I may, FX Please. buried it. They, well, they buried it. They just were like, no. They just like wouldn't air it, and it was very. It was strange because it was like. No one's gonna care either way, you know. <laughs> they wouldn't air it. Or, I mean, they owned it, but they didn't air they, it. They just like wouldn't air it. They wouldn't give us any answers. It was very just like. Do you think they didn't like it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How do I put this? Yep, I think that's exactly what it was. Yeah. I think the, they just like the, didn't have confidence in it. To the listeners, as this is, I'm saying this, and it's an understatement. The idea of someone seeing the special that I saw, Cinnamon in the Wind, and saying. We don't think this is e either A, funny, or B, um, worth airing, is extraordinary to me. Like, extraordinary. Like, I don't I don't want to know that person. Yeah, me neither. But did you, no. like, re-edit it or something? No, 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 like, no. Like, no, there's and, no changes? And I, and I thought, I'm like, well, I'm sneaking in under the, you know, overcoat of Bo Burnham here. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I get you might not give a shit about me, but what about the guy, that guy? Who, like, runs comedy. Yeah, so it was just sort of, it was it was unfortunate because it was He's just like, like the like, avatar of comedy right yeah, now. Yeah, no. It was, he's, it, he's like... Hey, do you know Bo? Like you say, hey, I'm a comedian. You go, yeah. Do you know Bo? But yes, <laughs> I've yes. Yeah. So I mean, I don't know. I mean, I I guess they thought it was a little weird or hard. I I don't know. I don't know. And it, here's what's really funny. Now I'm just really I'm just going there hard. Yeah, yeah, go there. No, but it's it's also this thing which I always return to with like making things. It's sometimes just liberating. Like I was talking to my friend recently who was working on something and freaking out about it, and I was like, if this helps at all, like no one cares. Right. It's like even if, like, about which part. Like. like that it make, was buried. Like no, no, no. Like making something. It's like at the end of the day, no one really cares. Right. It's like your own experience of making something, but no one really cares. Right. Like I mean, like art is powerful, and we all love things. But like, if the thing, what I'm so what I'm saying is, so when it finally came out, I was like, I'm probably gonna get a Harry and David's basket from FX. <laughs> I was like, here comes the champagne, <laughs> and then it was of course just like they told us it was coming out like three days before it came out. No. Yeah, they were like, it's actually gonna drop next Wednesday. Which which was weird because it was also the week that my show Kate was opening up off Broadway. Yeah. So it was just like, all right. So it was just very. It was like there was like no ceremony, which is fine. How, how much of a ceremony do I need? A little bit, maybe. Yeah. Maybe how about Harry something? and David's. Basket. How about a little Harry and David's? How about a candle? Yeah. <laughs> and so I was like anticipating the gift that never arrived, and then of course I just went out and never heard from them. It's fine. Who cares? God bless them. I'm still available. I still want to work with you. Yes, available and want to work. I know how you can make it up to me. <laughs> Yeah. Harry and David's basket. <laughs> yeah. I bet they hear this and they get Harry and David's basket for you. That would be really cool. I hope so. And then bear the hatchet. So with Bo, now that's two projects with him because mm -hmm. he did Kate, the mm -hmm. solo show you did, yeah. which I love. And he did Cinnamon in the Wind. Yeah. Are you going to do more? We'll see. You don't know. Life is long. Yeah. Yeah. But that's yeah, it's a so. deep relationship. Like I've done five solo shows with Seth Barish. It's a deep relationship. Oh, like yeah, you fair, have to yeah. you have to really like go there with him like yeah. a lot. Yeah. Totally. Did you cuz the thing that I love about that special so much is that it does the thing and I was texting this to you it's like it does the thing that you hope specials do which is it feels like you're in the room where they filmed it and it never feel specials never feel like that. That's so nice. Thank you. Okay. Just to just to give context for the listeners. Um the, the 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 titular line 
mm. cinnamon in the wind is life i'm quoting kate and <laughs> life like this show is cinnamon in the wind it's just whoosh you know it's gone and you're just there left cursing the air like there was spice here once oh you my know God. it's that's all it is it's hard to admit but you know life is short i like that life is short and then my favorite line <laughs> write that down <laughs> Oh my god, to hear it in your mouth scripted. Wow, yeah. It's um But yeah. the but the cinnamon in the wind line, what I love about it is, you know, it's 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 uh you know, life is short. I like that. Life is short, <laughs> write that down. It's like to me that encapsulates your sense of humor and the in the aesthetic of the show, which is like you're saying things that are of course true, but they're with a layer of uh irony. But also they're true. Yeah. <laughs> it's a pretty good uh, metaphor. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Do you feel yeah. like that with... Because your stuff so often... Like, well, you, I shouldn't say that. Your stuff is uh, between Kate and Cinnamon in the Wind. It's like parodying comedy or it's mm -hmm. parodying... Even when you and John went on The Tonight Show and did like a five-minute set about getting ready to yeah, do yeah. your set. Like so much of it's this meta kind of we're not going to do comedy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's like, what you're making fun of is kind of me. <laughs> <laughs> you're like earnestly like doing a solo show. Um, do, you, do you think you'll ever come over to the dark side and do a solo show where you reveal yourself? I know, right? Do you think about right? that? <laughs> well, that's what finds it to me because I've always been like, I see those things as being very revealing. Like I feel very naked and vulnerable. In your show. Yeah, yeah. No, I get that. Yeah, so I'm like, well, this is, I'm particularly like with my with my stage show, Kate, it's like it was my first time doing like a truly scripted, like written thing that wasn't relying on improv. There's no improvisation in the show. I mean, there's a couple parts. There are two parts that change every night a little bit, but. I mean, I don't want to give anything away, yeah. but it kind of can't be, right? Because there's technical elements no, that totally, you're, you're stuck be, in. Yeah. Which was really liberating because I'm just really used to with stand up, of course, there's material that I repeat, and exp like, of course. Yeah. But a lot when I approach stand up, so much of it for me is, um, is still based on like things changing in the moment and finding things as yeah. they happen, which is really exciting, but also really scary. And I get very nervous before shows. Yeah, when I I'm do in, too. When I'm in that position, where I'm like hoping like something's gonna happen that I can't anticipate yet or control. Whereas with the stage show. I'm nervous, but in a different way. And there is such, I can kind of relax into the structure of the show. It's really liberating. Why do you think, I've been thinking about this a lot lately, the idea of like nervousness, because people, a lot of times people will say to me, like, do you get nervous before shows? Because I think that's the thing that people associate with live performance. Yeah. Like, of course, like, I would never do that because yeah. it's so nerving. And I, I think I kind of came to grips with the fact recently that I do get nervous. But for years, I was like, nah. Oh my God, yeah. And now I'm like, no, nah, I do. But what do you think makes you nervous about getting on stage? What's the worst outcome? Not being funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and feeling. Is it on you or is it on the audience? Me. Like, on you. Yeah. Embarrassment. Yeah, and just like, I'm trying. I had I had kind of a weird set. So I haven't been doing stand up because the last my life has really been this show. The show, I, like, yeah. Wrote it for nine months and I was performing it. So I just I wasn't doing stand up and I'm now. Like, oh, right, I want to get back into stand-up. And so I've been doing some shows. And I had, I also realized that I have a very high pain tolerance. Like, I can come off stage and be like, I think some people would be like, that was bad. And I'll be like, <laughs> I had fun up there. <laughs> like, I think I'm, I think I do, like, strangely, I'm able to, take it or something i mean it hurts but also i'm not in a position not to brag it's not like i'm eating shit all the time yeah really. like but but i'm thinking about this because i had a show at the comedy store at the um in the main room the other night yeah and it was like i was like this is interesting and i i might have bombed <laughs> but i didn't really feel it that way yeah but i was like this makes me nervous like there are, i think for me if it's like there are moments where i feel like i really connected and I liked what I was doing and they liked it. Yeah. But, but then in that, because that environment is like, I'm not usually in like conventional clubs. Yeah. But um, I've had great experiences in conventional clubs, whatever. But you know, it was like a table of Navy SEALs and I found myself being like, the Navy SEALs, do they even let Jews in? And oh then like, they're like dying. I'm like, why am I doing, like, what am I doing? I'm like debasing <laughs> myself. I'm like trying to like contort to like give them what I imagine they want from me. But I think also I just, again, I'm just out. I just have not been doing stand up in so long that it feels kind of suddenly foreign or extra nerve-wracking but 
definitely didn't answer your question. You were saying, what is the, the nervousness? Yeah, what's the worst case scenario? The worst case scenario, oh, because here's the thing about if there is something true where if I feel like I'm doing something that is funny, that feels exciting to me, usually it will work. Yeah. And what doesn't feel good is if I do something that I don't love and it doesn't work. Yeah. Then it's like, why did I do that? Right. Like when you feel yourself not actually finding something new or you feel like, like in other words you don't even stand behind the yeah, concept yeah, yeah. and then you performed it for strangers yeah you do something just feels you're like oh i'm like not in this but i'm doing it because it worked or something and then they're like they don't like it you're like oh yeah of course you can feel it too yeah what's the weirdest thing that you've had in relation to an audience member because you like like when 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 you when when you walk into the audience of uh sorry of of mm -hmm. Kate yeah the show Kate there's a sign that says don't don't look at me oh yeah well and you're sitting like, there this was a very last minute joke that was <laughs> making Bo and I laugh like two days before we opened which was like it was always like okay I'm gonna sit in the in the entryway in sort of a gallery environment um and I'm gonna be sitting with a spotlight on me and it was like. I should have a sign around my neck or something. It's like, what should the sign say? It's like, I should say, ignore me. Just like, ignore so me. And it yeah, just yeah. like made us laugh. And it was like, yeah, okay, like, let's make the sign ignore me. And then it just like stuck. And so then that just. Um, it's one of my favorite yeah. things about the experience of the show is like, Thank you. it was so many things. Like, like, even like when you go to the restroom in the basement at that theater, like, there's signs all around. And, and like, like, the experience was somehow uh in kind of a sleep no more kind of way like it's a full theatrical experience immersive yeah. theatrical experience but at the same time it's just it's also just a solo show yeah it's like immersive but it's also like you know about this woman trying to create this experience and it's like not really the thing like it's like <laughs> like i had some people would come in like i remember hearing there was like some people that came in and they were like oh like it's serious or something like they actually <laughs> and I was like, God bless them. they're like oh like, like and then this like sweet like older woman was like that's the artist you know like whispering around and people were really reverent of me right. like me sitting there with the like right so and then of course some people would just immediately start laughing or they would just like they would feel the absurdity of it but yeah, there's a real, there was a real, um, yeah, this like person that I'm playing, this version of myself is like trying to create this experience for, for people, but it's just not really um, working or something. Right. Like it's, it's like, like it, almost the thing, but it's not. And well, also it's this thing, which was always my self-consciousness with my show is like, to be clear, I'm not making fun of modern art. It's like that's yeah. been the oldest, like that joke is beyond over. It's like, but there's <laughs> something... And there is something in me that genuinely does want to give people an experience. Yeah. Like take them out of the everyday or make people, um, you know, in awe of something, like, of course. And, and you do. Like, like I, and I can get this out of it. It gives away too much of the show. But it's like you have a, a running thing of you're going to cry. Yeah. Can I say that? I don't know if that's like in the reviews or not in the reviews or. I think it is. I think it's okay. But, but, but like. It's a compelling thing to watch a human being try to cry. Yeah. Well, it's like an, yeah, I think just the, yeah, there's something just deeply embarrassing about being an actor. It's something deeply embarrassing about like being on stage at yeah, all. Yeah, of course. Like, and I actually feel almost now, or it's like in the last 10 years or 15 years, I don't know, it's comedies. Like I think about when I was starting stand up when I was 17 and like, it was still kind of like a weird thing to do it. Yeah. And like, even just in the time that's passed, comedy now is like, it's like so popularized in this way where I just think people have less shame about it. I think they should have more. <laughs> <laughs> it is mainstream. I always, I always say that to people because people speak to me as though these people who are, you know, the Burt Kreischers of the world or the, you know, uh, or even Mulaney being in tabloids or something like yeah. they talk about it like it, they know him or whatever and I'm just like <laughs> it didn't used to be like this yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like when these people like Mulaney's an interesting example because it's like when he got into comedy it wasn't the kind of art form where your divorce would be mentioned in the tabloids oh my god, I mean my god yeah. and so and and so I think it's kind of a shocking turn for people 
like you and I and others who are just in this thing. I can't even go to the grocery store. Exactly. I'm, like, I'm being swarmed. No, no, but but it is exactly. true. It's like, it, well, it's just social media. Is that what it is? Probably. Probably. Surveillance, constant. I think, yeah, I think <laughs> it's constant surveillance <laughs> that's it's, doing it's it. It's the constant surveillance and the, yeah. self, the self-surveillance. Yeah. Did you tell me this? When you were in New York for so long doing your solo show, mm-hmm. did it make you want to live in New York? Yeah. Good. Well, uh, well I lived in Good. New York for eight years. Oh, I know, I know. No, but of, of course. But you left us. I never even told anyone I left because I wanted, I couldn't accept leaving. I wasn't like, I'm leaving, come to this arcade bar. You know, I just was like, and send me off. I just kind of left. Yeah. And, but didn't. And, <laughs> send me off in this arcade yeah, bar. Know, like whatever, like, the, like <laughs> the, the sort of like thing that people do is, but I just, um, no, I love New York and I love being here. And, you know, I get to be here a lot and yeah, I'd move back. I just, you know, my parents are old. They live in LA. Right. I get it. Only child. One yeah. time orphaned. Yeah. Which won't be ever. They'll never die. Um, <laughs> then, you know, but I, I love both places. And mm. This is from, uh, <laughs> this is from your show. Um, <laughs> it's sometimes, I'll admit it, hard being the only artist in the room. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My brother Joe goes, I find this statement exceptionally bold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, then I say the only true artist. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> do you ever get people? Do you ever get people who don't get the joke of you in your yeah, shows? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure they're there, but I don't. I just, to me, I'm like, I identify primarily. Like, I just want to be silly. Right. Like that's always the goal. Right. And that's always, yeah. So so. But what if people don't get that it's silly? Like, I like can't you help did this, those people. But you did this thing on the Today Show that it was so good. You were talking about you were in Don't Worry, Darling, and you're great in it. It's a it's a great movie. I talked to Nick Kroll about it on here too. But you <laughs> you're talking about um, how the actors were intimidated by you because they're such big fans of yours yeah, yeah. and you're saying it with like su- you're like harry styles you're like oh, yeah, it was really hard for him to be around me and, yeah uh, which i'm like it's like it's like almost like too obvious a joke it's not though it's so funny because Ugh. there's this moment where they don't quite know if it's a joke and i'm like i do not have that i can't yeah. do that yeah, yeah do you yeah. ever get nervous <laughs> like right before and go like oh i can't like you thought of that before you went on yeah, I mean, I think, uh, no, something like that to me, it's almost, yeah, it's just so absurd. It's like, yeah, poor Harry Styles is nervous to be around me. Yeah. He was breaking on set. It's like, no, he wasn't. <laughs> Are you intimidated by any of these people you work with? So it's like, you get cast in like phenomenally cool projects. You're like, you're in Abby Jacobson's show, you're in Tarantino's movie, you're in Olivia Wilde's movie, like all these things where it's like these awesome directors. Like, is there a point at which you're just like, oh, actually this is unnerving? Oh yeah, I mean the Tarantino of it all, and to be clear, I had a scene, you know, I'm not trying to, <laughs> let's be clear. Um, no, Once that Upon was, a Time in Hollywood. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Um, Boots which, Riley's another one. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. No, I, it's, um, uh, I mean, the Tarantino thing is like a joke. I mean, it's like a life dream. It's, it's like weird, right? Gun to my head. Like, who are the people you would kill? To, you know, it's like yeah. And so that was who were who would be those people you'd kill? <laughs> oh, you know, I mean, who are the big dream? You know, I'm a normal person. I'm like, I'm like Tarantino, Paul Thomas Anderson. Mm, yeah. You know, of course, like, um, just those two. No, there's there's there are plenty, but I mean, it's like. Yeah. But some, who would you kill? Who would you kill to work with them? Oh, oh yeah. Who oh, would you murder? Right. Who would I kill? Yeah. Anyone I don't know. No, no, it can't be. <laughs> <laughs> it can't be someone you don't know. It has to be specific people yeah. you've at least met. <laughs> yeah, 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 you've at yeah. least met. Right, right, right. Or they die nonviolent. Yeah. Death. Yeah. You have to be like Patrick Borelli or someone oh. who like we know. Oh <laughs> I wouldn't even shoot a dog. <laughs> um, but when you were working with like people like Tarantino or or Boots Riley, or whoever, like, yeah. do you have a moment of, like, like, A, are you nervous? B, afterwards, do you feel better in some ways? Like, I worked with Tom Hanks and Mark Forrester on A Man Called Otto, and actually, afterwards, I feel more confident as an actor because I'm like, well, I'm not mm. afraid of that anymore. 
Yeah, I think there was a thing. The Tarantino job was funny because my character is not like funny. Like, of course, like all his scripts and dialogue are so funny. So it's like there's no escaping that it's comedy or whatever. Yeah. But it's like my character wasn't like I had to look in my like I remember being in my trailer. I was like looking in myself in the mirror and I was like, you need to calm down. Don't cross your eyes. Relax. It's not about you. It was like serve the script because wow. I had the urge to be like, look what I can do, daddy. You know, like I wanted to like, but it's like, no, I'm just like there to like execute this. It's like. It's it's like a simple scene. It's a clear scene. Like, don't make it about you. But of course, I have the desire to like because that was also just a straight up audition, like cattle call audition. Like he didn't know me as a comedian oh, or anything like that. Interesting. So Did you put yourself which, on tape. I went in, and that's actually what that oh. thing did because I, um, that's the only job I've ever gotten from a straight up audition. Really, where the person didn't know me. The and I'm not exaggerating. The only one. And I've been on 4,600 auditions. Yeah. And I just always know I won't get it. And I'm like, well, the job isn't to get the job. It's to make a fan, you know, or whatever. So I went into that where it was like, oh, you know, went in 10,000 like women in the waiting room. The walls are paper thin. You can hear what everyone's doing. I had to like go out in the hall and be like, because I just was like, I'm going to just start like parroting what I'm hearing through the wall. And then, you know, went in, did it once, left, thought there's no way I got it. And then I got the call. So cool. So yeah, but very was very nervous. But he was like so unbelievably lovely and generous, and like he knows what that experience means for me. He knows I'm walking onto like a crazy movie set there for two days. Like he he understands that this is a big deal for me. Yeah, what I've heard about working with him is like also like he loves making movies so well, much that's yeah i mean he was that's exactly the thing i was like this he is like laughing all day like truly like <laughs> yes. loving it it was yeah. just like thank god my god he loves what he does yeah like, dude loves laughing, what he does just yeah loving yeah. it loving it well another thing yeah i heard him say watches his own movies yeah. if it's on tbs pulp fiction's on that. i'll watch it jackie brown it's so cool <laughs> That rules. He loves movies. <laughs> yeah. Dude loves movies. He loves yeah. his own movies. He's really good at he it. He should. Yeah. Um, do you, you're, you're thought of and described by uh, the Times and other places as like a trailblazer of like modern alt comedy that people are like doing versions of you. The Times, folks. Not my words. Not my words. Yeah. <laughs> not, not Kate's words. <laughs> <laughs> what if the Times says it? <laughs> <laughs> What do you, when you see people doing you, so to speak, good, bad, how do you feel about it? No, oh my God, don't do this to me. No, no, I, I'm like completely. Keep just, it in. Well, by the way. Keep it in. By the way, we're all, it's it's like the history of everything. It's like doing, you of know, course. It's, it's like when I was, thinking, I was thinking about when I was starting stand up and I was doing like a Sarah Silverman, Eugene Merman, like mashup. Okay. Or I was doing it's like Oh, you're early stand up. Yeah, like Yeah, we like, all are. I like, was doing Mitch Hedberg and Greg Geraldo yeah, and this person like, that person. Yeah. You know, finding your fucking shtick. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't begrudge people that when you're like, You're doing me. It's inc of course as you can imagine. That's actually me. <laughs> if someone says to me, Oh, this is a it's like it's like truly it's like flattering move on like all right it's like yeah also, it's also it's like if someone can like do you no one can take your thing if they can no. you're fucked you know it's that's like, true so it's sort of like well that's true like i you know you, you have a great joke about how your your uh your influences are pottery and small batch granola <laughs> <laughs> and in such small quantities that they resist capitalism and carlin Oh my God! Which is great. Thank you. What are your actual influences in addition to small batch granola? Um, I mean, yeah. When I was when I was like starting to get really obsessed with comedy, I was actually you. You know the the invite them up like double CD. I was oh obsessed yeah, I love with. that album. Yeah, and I mean, the double CD. Well, there were two. Double CD. Um, yeah. And I actually met Bobby Tisdale the other night for the wow. first time. Wow. I was like so starstruck. I was like. 30 seconds of stand up. I was like, oh my God. I love Bobby. Like, devoured all. I was so obsessed with that scene. Like, the Rafifi, like, everyone that was coming out of that and Variety Shack. Yeah. And, like, Stella. Like, oh my God. And all. Yeah, you're on that album. Yeah. I'm it's on like, them by the like, yeah. yeah, it's like everyone. I was just like, <gasps> I just devoured it. I was so obsessed. So, that scene was huge for me. That thing. You could never have guessed at the time. I remember Jack Vaughn was the producer of it for Comedy Central Records. He's like, I'm doing a double album of Invite Them Up. And I thought, like, 
yeah, sure, you could do that. It was like one of the most prescient things I've ever seen happen in comedy, mm. which is like taking a scene, a downtown East Village scene at that moment with Eugene Merman and all these folks, and and just capturing it on album, putting it out as a double album. It's really like varied and all kinds of bizarre stuff, but like, you know, it's Mulaney's on it and Aziz is on it and all these people yeah. who ended up having big comedy careers, but it's like when they were starting. Yeah. It's a really good album. I really can't wait to go back and listen to it because I think it's the sort of thing where I like music, I'll listen to it and just know every like lyric, like it'll just immediately return. Did you have it like... Well, that was poetic. Well, <laughs> did you have it like... <laughs> Well, Andy Kaufman is like always credited as like the forefather or Andy Kaufman and or Steve Martin. Yeah, Steve like, Martin. Like I, yeah, I was obsessed with Steve Martin. Did he come to your solo show? How did I put this? No. <laughs> <laughs> he was shooting, this. you know, his show and, you know, people no, were no. busy. No, no, of um, course. I would of love course. to. I, I, um, I will be doing it in L.A. Tickets aren't on sale yet. Oh, you're doing it in L.A.? I'm announcing it here. You've oh, got breaking the news. Breaking news, mid-January to mid-February, Pasadena Playhouse. Oh, we're breaking news. We're breaking news. This I is guess huge. I can. Why not? Yeah. So <laughs> we love to break news so, here. Uh, but tickets aren't even on sale yet. I'll be I'll be posting, but yeah. So wait, when it, when is it going to be? So the show will be mid-January to mid-February. Nice. The Pasadena Playhouse. Have you ever been there? Beautiful. Yeah, I theater. performed. I workshop sleepwalk with me there. Oh, yeah. I, I'd never been. Gorgeous. There. It's like they just beautiful. won. They just won. I think an honorary Tony the they other day. Did? Yep. Yep. Do you? Oh, this is one thing I wanted to ask because I. The, uh, uh, Mabel pointed out, who works on the show, that there is an analogy to what you do and what you and John do with your sketch show, which I love also. Oh, thank Holy you. Holy cow, it's on Peacock. Thank you, it is on Peacock. So good. <laughs> and um, and The Lonely Island. Mm -hmm. And like, The Lonely, like, because Yorma Ciccone was on this show, and like, we talked about this idea of like, that, that, sketch show is so strange like to the point of like i want to say your beavers going through tsa we are <laughs> you want to say it because that's all it is my friend and like like it's so like the work that you and john do together is so absurd that you just, as as a fan of it i'm just asking like What's too absurd to pitch to yeah. John? Like, like, do you ever go like, yeah, you shouldn't pitch that? I know that was like something that actually our director, who we work, collaborate with a lot, Andy DeYoung, he was the one who actually said, I think, like, I think I was walking to the airport with him, and he was like, yeah, like you guys should just be like Beaver at the airport or something. And I was like, Beaver at the airport, print it, like, it's like, which often happens with us and myself. Like, it's like first thought, best thought, like whatever, just yeah. like whatever. It's just like, all right, that's it. Like first just, up, best not, and just like not going into it too much, just kind of like right there's, there. Being there's like, a lot of do. there's a lot of credence to first yeah, up, best thought. Yeah, and so, but I think one of the yeah the balance between absurdity and sincerity, like that's always the sort of the stuff that I like the most. Kind of has both at the same time in equal measure. Yeah, <laughs> I believe women have the right to steal cosmetics. Oh yeah, that's an oldie. Are you kidding me? We're forced to into a system where we have to constantly pay for creams, powders, and lotions. This is a great example of, <laughs> great joke. In my mind, I'm going, uh, that's illegal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't actually support that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. I feel like when you can convince an audience member to laugh at a thing that is entirely incorrect, it's yeah. like you win. Yeah, and it's true. I mean, I still feel that way. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. There's truth. Right. It works because there's a great well, truth. Well, also because in it. that, because I used to actually be like kind of a klepto. Oh, really? Like, I mean, I used to actually. Breaking news. I used to actually still make up. Right. To be send clear. Send this to. Not wait, deadline? Small, Can not, we send this to <laughs> Pete Hammond? Not from small businesses. And I talk about this with that. I'm like, <laughs> I know. I'm like, we're talking about big, you know, Sephora, CVS. They can take it. But it is. um. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The makeup industrial complex. Yeah. Yeah. I'm taking this. Fuck them. Yeah. Yeah. I pay for it now. Yeah. Still tempted at yeah, times. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so you stole Gives when, me a real when? kick. Yeah, yeah. You still in high school? Uh, a little later. <laughs> 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 Let's just say I'd be not much later, but maybe twenty years old, hit up the Sephora Union Square. Oh okay. get some Dior Foundation, okay. go to CPK. Okay, okay. Shaking, say say no more. Adrenaline. Wow.
This is called the slow round. Um, do you remember a period in your life where you were kind of like a an inauthentic version of yourself? Like mm. you're like a totally different Kate? Like I'm living it now. Um, <laughs> oh, an inauthentic version. Yeah. I was kind of like, I didn't really, I sort of could move freely between all groups. Yeah. Because I was just like, really was kind of just like the clown. Yeah. It's like coolness has always been this thing that I've always been like since I was a child, like suspicious of and also on the outside of and like, so I can, I think about uh, like adolescent or previous attempts to be perceived as hip or cool are always like treacherous. So you've always been suspicious of cool, but then what's funny, you know, the irony of that is I you're want to be cool. Well, you're cool now. Oh God. You're cool to all the kids, the young kids coming up doing sketch comedy and stand up. They're like, oh, she's the, she and John are the cool ones. I fucking did it. <laughs> 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 I guess it's cool to be yourself. <laughs> but uh but the but to what you were saying though, I'm like, oh yeah, I can like remember those attempts or just just the inherent like which I think everyone goes through, like of course, like probably. Did you um do you remember a time in your life when you ran away, like physically ran away? Like I'm I'm running away from home? Yeah, or anywhere. I think I remember doing the very kind of cartoonish, like, I'm leaving when I was a child, like, with a suitcase, but... For real? Yeah, like, packing up. I had, like, a Mickey Mouse, like, patent leather suitcase, and I was like, wow. fuck you, you know, and, like, kind of packed up to leave. Wow. Didn't leave, of course, but... um, <laughs> um Strangest neighbor you had growing up? Okay, so I, when I was... So my house growing up, I lived, I mean, it's still my, where I grew up, my parents' house. There's an old age home directly across the street. And so there would always be, like, I remember I would hear in the middle of the night, like, just, like, the screams of someone, like, lost in, like, the deepest mm. madness. <laughs> like, like, I, like, the horror, like, the deep, like, when you're a child and you hear, like, a guttural scream from, like, an old man. Yeah. And it's, like, like, it was, like, the most terrifying sounds that would come out of the old age home. Wow. There was, like, a... There was a guy who used to sit on the corner in his wheelchair and he would blast the radio at like 4 a.m. Wow. And we would hear it. It would be so loud in the house. Yeah. And I remember my parents were like, can we like, can we get him headphones? Like, we just, like <laughs> can we get him headphones? <laughs> I remember that was it. It was like, we want him to be able to do that and go out. <laughs> but like, can we just, you know. Like Radio Rahim and do the right thing. Just like, yeah. 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 Did you have a, what's your worst or best nickname growing up? I went by Kitty like my whole life. Oh, that's sweet. And my parents still call me Kitty. Kitty. And like people that oh my gosh. knew me from when I was a kid, they still call me Kitty. Kitty. Yeah. Love that. I went by Kitty till I was like 11 or something. I don't, When I started in comedy, my mentor, my writing mentor in college tried to convince me to change my name. To and one of, the, one of the ones I considered for real, Mickey Berbiglia. And the reason why that's I was incredible. He, this guy John Glavin is brilliant. He he was like, then you get Mickey, you get the Irish, and then Berbigley, you get the Italian. <laughs> He's like, I'm telling you. No, no, for real. No one's I mean, gonna he, sink this act. He tried to really make a case for Mickey Berbigley. Mickey Berbigley. Yeah, but I, I think there, I think I think Mickey's a great name. Mickey's a fun name, and like I just think you know it's never too late for Kitty if you want to go know, with it. I know. Kitty Berlant. I mean, I, Kitty Berlant has I like know, a black and white uh, classic yeah, comedy yeah. quality. Yeah. Kitty Berlant here. I know. What if was wrong with me? I should have stuck. Kitty Berlant. She's got it. And I can't do it now. Her career's on fire. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Kitty Berlant. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I don't even know if you have this. What's the biggest assumption people get wrong about you? I, I've, I think people think that I'm... Um, this is a weird thing to say. Like people are always like, you're nice or something. I'm like, yeah, what? <laughs> like, I think there's like a, I think sometimes people, maybe less so, but I think sometimes people think of my act or something as somehow like impenetrable or like, like not like, again, like maybe like not vulnerable or not like in the room or something. Like I'm like, I think the thing of like. Oh, they're surprised when you are nice because your act is so like, uh, kind of like edgy in a maybe this like yeah, kind of like um, they're kind of like arrogant or like impossible to like pin down or something. Where it's like right. no, I like pin me down. It's like I can talk. I can have like a, I can have a grounded conversation with someone. <sighs> that well, no, Which I think I, it's a comedian thing too. People just think that you're like, or sometimes people are like, I can't tell if you're making fun of me. I'm like, all I said was, how are you? Right. 
No, I, I think that's that's interesting because even I had that. Like when you and John came to Old Man in the Pool, like I fear your judgment, not because of our conversations <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. off stage, but because no. on st- on stage you're just like a you're you're a knife. You know what I mean? Like you're incisive and you're yeah. So I'm thinking in my he- my you. head when no. you're watching like. I'm Kate like says. Oh my god! But that's all. That's so what it is. Whenever like a comedian or like someone you admire and think is good comes to see you, it's like terrifying. Oh yeah. Yeah. It was when I came to your opening that night was so fun. in New York. It was like Murderer's Row of every comedian ever. Oh my god! Did that? Did that throw you at all? Because it it's... was like I want to say it was like half the cast of Saturday Night Live was there. I think Bowen Yang was behind me. I think like. I want to say Alana Glazer was there. Like, it just seemed like everyone ever was there. It was, yeah, it was so fun. <laughs> it yeah. was really nice. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, yeah, of course, perform. It's, 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 yeah, it's nerve wracking. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, what's a song that makes you cry? <gasps> oh, God. What is, okay. Um, what's this? Let me think about this a second. A song that makes me cry. A lot of them. Um, Neil Young always makes me cry mm. or like pulls on me in that way. Um, Heart of Gold. Yeah, or um, um, I was, it was just funny. Imagine that I actually have never heard a Neil Young song. <laughs> like, yeah, that one or the the, the, the man who wouldn't go away. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Up on the mountain instantly. or yeah, something. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. What's a What's the best piece of advice anyone's given you that you used? Mm so hard i think uh well we're talking so much about my show kate and Bo, who you know was my director and worked with me on that um so intensely like he would just kind of tell me like tell the story if i would get absorbed in like different details or performance notes it's just like tell the story it's like yeah. very difficult that kind of simplicity is hard to achieve or just to remember it's just like yeah like just tell the story yeah, well, I talk about that. With, I'm working with right. Alex Edelman on his solo show, Just For Us, right now. And, like, we often talk about um, how it's just the story. Story's a star. And sometimes that's enough. Yeah. I always think about, I always think about um, Francis McDormand winning, uh, was it a Golden Globe for Olive Kittredge? I don't know, but I love that, that miniseries. Never read the book. Still plan to. But she, <laughs> of course, in classic Frances McDormand type. She like won her award and she got up there and she yeah, was like... Yeah, she's always a great speech. She giver. was like, sometimes a well-told story is enough and just walked mm-hmm. away. And I was like, yeah. Oh, is that what she did? Yeah, ain't that the truth. Oh, I love that. She... Or, or which is, sometimes a good story is enough or something. Yeah, it was like that. I was like, wow. it's the truth. That's a really Which good is also one. something John... I never went to acting school, but John did. Yeah. And I feel like something... Oh, or you know what I like? Or it's like reading um, David Mamet's book um, true and false about mm-hmm. acting and I love how skating he is about school and like training mm. I think because I was rejected from acting school so I like his whole thing of like stay out of school like, yeah. like that and what he says he's like so he just like eviscerates the idea of like theater school oh interesting and he's just like you know he kind of talks about as keeping you as in this like endless like amateurism oh and that it's wow. like and he talks about acting as being athletic like this like emotional deep dive of like well, who am I let me go into my past and let me he's like stand still yep. and like speak clearly and i like that just sort of that like the athletic practice of performing and kind of getting more into that and less in the intention or like whatever emotion you're bringing it's like it's a it's athleticism there's a great thing that mamet said in one of his books that i remember where he's just like do the action say the words that's probably true and false and it's just like yeah. it's just like yeah like the more the more I do this over the years, the more that I find that to be true. Yeah. The other one, yeah, the other one people say is keep it simple, stupid, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. which is just like just keep it simple, just do it. Yeah. Just do the thing, say the words. Or you know, Carl Jung, we don't solve our problems, we just grow bigger than them. It's like no, they're always there. It's like you just have to like you aim to somehow like build a self that can transcend them or that can yeah become bigger. That's super, that's super smart. It's just like, it's never going to get solved, which I think is helpful. Oh, you know, it's funny. It's one of the, one of the questions is what's a group that you were rejected by and it's acting school. Acting school. Yeah. Holy cow. The big guy. This is inspirational. This is inspirational. Oh yeah. Rejected. Quentin Tarantino didn't ask what acting school you went to. (laughs) Isn't that the truth? (laughs) And I still mumble.
didn't have the vocal training. Yeah. No, I um, yeah, I applied for acting school. Went through the whole all the auditions, the whole thing. No, 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 no. Can you believe it? Well, my question Best is... Best thing that never happened to me. That's right. Yeah. So my question is, you don't... Okay, you get... Someone's watching this, listening to it. You get rejected from acting school. What gave you this confidence to be like, no, no, I got, I got, <laughs> I got this. I was... Well, I was already doing stand-up at that point. I had started to do stand-up. So yeah. actually, I think what did happen is I was rejected from acting school and I was like... Okay, well, I'm just gonna become a stand-up comedian. Yeah, and so like my stand-up has always been actorly or something, but I, I didn't think about. I mean, I wasn't acting. In, I wasn't doing any acting outside of stand-up. No, and also I mean, you did something in your control, which is like doing stand-up, is just something you can create on your own. This is called uh, From the Notebook, where oh. I work out material on the show. Unbelievable. Yeah. That's one of the things that's odd about this show is like, I'll actually, I do material that's not done. It's unfinished. Yeah. And so if you have a thought. Hit me with it. Or a tag or an, <laughs> or, an, or really just like an extrapolation, like it makes you think of something else. Um, <laughs> on stage, I go, this is how I dress. One day I walked into a Marshalls and I said, which section do undercover cops shop in? They point. <laughs> they pointed me to the button-down shirts and khakis, and here I am. That's perfect. It's That's really based funny. on it's based on this true story. I was in Greenwich Village. I was walking on the sidewalk, and a guy passed by me and said to the person walking in front of me, "You have an undercover cop behind you." That and, is so funny. And the guy looked back at me, and then I looked behind me, and then I looked back and I go, "No," which is of course what an undercover <laughs> cop would say. That is so funny. So that, yeah, so that's fun. And then, and then the other thing in the universe is that, oh, there's another, like, there's so many drugs in the village. Like, it's such a, yeah, like, this guy came up to me the other day. He goes, um, hey, you look like you could, you could use some cocaine. No. And I, yeah. And I go, no, thanks. I don't I've never use cocaine. And I, and he goes, sorry, wrong guy. <laughs> I was like, oh, classic mix up. I love that that's still happening in New York City. Just coming up to you going, you look like you could use a bump. Yeah, there's a lot of drugs here. Yeah. A lot of drugs. Well, if the drugs aren't here, where the hell are they? Where are be? they? Where are they? Exactly. I don't have a joke on this yet, but it's like, I've never seen cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> that is, yeah, For real. Yeah, yeah. I People view me as such a straight arrow mm -hmm. that they di it didn't cross. It's never crossed their mind. He should see it. Right, 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 right. We should show it just, to him. Just so you know. Yeah, yeah just so you know yeah. what, it lo what ours looks like. Yeah. Maybe you'd want to get involved. I've had people go like, hey, you know, and I'm like, no, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. But I've never been like, I've never looked down never seen the a barrel. With some, I've never some looked down the barrel of a, of a cocaine yeah. cut. Yeah. It would be so, imagining you like seeing cocaine and you like being reduced to like a child, like like imagining you like dragging your fingers like through <laughs> like perfectly like laid out lines, just cause like like as if like you'd be reduced to a child like in play, like a play like relationship. Like if you show a child cocaine, yes, well they do, they'll like mess right, up the cocaine sure. with their fingers. Sure, like they give you as an adult just being like, like yes. you having fun with cocaine, having fun, with, have fun with cocaine. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I like that. I. I actually, so I take clonopin, which is a downer, and cocaine's an upper, so theoretically a cocktail of the two could could be helpful. Yeah, yeah. But I wrote this down. Um, my doctor prescribes one and a half uh, milligrams of, of clonopin. Um, pretty surprised she trusts me with the half cut. <laughs> like, yeah, like a yeah, majority yeah. of the time, it's like me crumbling a chocolate chip cookie right. and then like licking up some of the cookie dust. Yeah. Like that's what it is. I Those hope that's the right pills. dose. Yeah. 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 Doesn't not a clean break. No. Doesn't no. feel like a 50-50. Do you have one of the little pill slicers? I do, but it doesn't work that well. No. I don't pills. find. Yeah. I don't know. And then I and then I wrote after 20 years of taking this clonopin, I looked at the side effects cuz I didn't want to for years. Yeah, yeah. I was like, ah. I have to take it. I don't even want to think about what the side effects are. So I looked, memory loss, depression, <laughs> <laughs> poor motor coordination. I was like, well, that explains my personality. Oh my God. And then I, uh, and then this is the part that really worried me. Long-term users may write one person show. <laughs> That's good. It's fun. Oh my God. 
Yeah. So that's like my little chunk on drugs that I'm working on. That's good. That's good. Um, and then... Uh, Can you imagine if you stopped the clonopin and then to bring back Mickey, you just like... Had <laughs> to bring back Mickey for Big Leah? <laughs> a complete um, personality shift. Oh, you know what? We'll end on this. <laughs> the other day we took Una to see her parents and her grandparents in Florida. And it's very sunny. Jenny and Una both got freckles. And uh, and Una said, I think a great joke to Jenny. She goes, it's like, she goes, mom, it's like you drank freckle juice, except it worked. I was like, oh, so strong. That's so cute. So strong. Damn. A few minutes later, Jenny says to Una, Una, it's like you drank freckle juice, except it worked. And Una starts crying. I go, Una, what's wrong? She goes, mom stole my joke. No. I was like, welcome to showbiz, wow. Ken. Yeah, yeah. That's deep. Eight years old. Yeah. Get used to it, girl. Life comes at you fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. It is a lot. That reminds me of a joke that yeah. I've never been able to figure out fully. But just talking about how the fact that life is consecutive. Yeah. Like you're born and then you're alive the whole time. Yeah. Until you die. Yeah. Like there's no escape. Yeah. Yeah. That. It's hard. There's that, no break. That take, the that, only that's a, the only break is death. Yes. I mean, that's, that's, what people, that's why people do drugs or do whatever. Yes. But it's like, but it's like. Yeah, it's that's either it. death or <laughs> right? drugs. You got to show up every day. You got to show. Yeah. You'd oh my god. You think there'd be time off? That's all I'm saying. You'd think you'd get to like maybe live it out in chunks. I heard a thing recently. A psychologist said that actually really affected me in a positive way, which is. He goes, every day when you wake up, your tendency is to think of the past, things in the past. Mm -hmm. And the best thing you can do is just write down things you want to do today. Ooh. Just focus on that. And I started doing it so much, so much happier. Yeah. Isn't that a good one? Yeah, yeah. totally. No joke. Are but you a bit, I mean, I write my journal every morning. I write my journal before I go to bed at night. Oh, you're a night one. Yeah. yeah. I actually have it because I'm traveling. Like, I haven't done it the last week. I feel we, the effects. <laughs> <laughs> Does it help you therapeutically? Yeah, without even kind of knowing it, I think because it is just like I'm maintaining habits is really difficult for me. But that's a habit I've been I'm pretty. I write down my dreams every morning. I write oh, my journal that's every good. Morning. Yeah. yeah, I always say to Jenny, I go like, if I die, burn the journals. Totally. I no, I've been thinking about that. Woo! Burn the journals. Sometimes I write them almost for publication. Oh. Sometimes I go, God, this is good. Or sometimes I'll even like, I'll write something. And I'll go. No, I find I do this. I'll write uh, something. And I'll go. God, listen to myself. To be like, I'm aware. Yeah. For the reader, to be like, Jesus. Oh, okay, she's listen. She's saying, Oh my God, listen to me. Like, that's a. I try to. That's find. a good bit though. <laughs> that's a good bit. Like huh. editorializing your own journals yeah, as yeah, you're writing yeah. them. Arrows. What an idiot. Yeah. What an idiot. <laughs> yeah. 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 What's a nonprofit you've given to before? Oh yeah. Um, so I'm, I, a while ago gave to this um, foundation and would like to promote them. They're called Dig Deep and they provide water to um, specifically, I think the Navajo reservation, but it's like 40% of like indigenous communities like don't have water. Oh my gosh. A hundred percent of the donations to Dig Deep uh, go to close this attempt to close the water gap in the US. Um, That's fantastic. Yeah. So we're going to contribute to them. We're going to link to them in the show notes and, and encourage Incredible. our listeners to give. Um, I can't thank you enough for coming. Your special is so great. Your solo show is so great. It's going to be in Los Angeles. People, I mean, it's going to be sold out wall to wall. People should get tickets like right away when it goes on sale. I am going to be doing it in London in September. Oh, me too. No, I'm September, doing London? In the pool in September. In London? Yeah, where are you doing it? I'm doing it at the Soho main stage. Never been. Well, that's great. I'm doing it at the Wyndham's down the street. Oh, I love this. I smell a dinner. Yes. Yeah,